Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. We are answering a great question today from Maggie Gatsby. I don't know if that's Maggie's real name, but if it is, it's you think cool. Maggie's related to the Great Gatsby? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. That's cool. um, but a while back, we did a video "Who's Who" at the Publishing House, which apparently went over well because Maggie asked us if we'd consider doing a "Who's Who" at the literary agency, and considering <laughs> that's where we work, I think it's probably a good idea. <laughs> so we work. <laughs> we're going to start at the top, and we're going to work our way down at the top and then we're going to work our way down the ranks so to speak of who works at a literary agency um one thing to note too is that this list is a compilation but there's no standard so um what one agency gives us titles or calls somebody might be completely different at another agency not all agencies have all of these people on staff um some might work with them on a contract basis there's just a million ways an agency works so don't assume that, that when you go into an agency this full list is going to match everybody or the responsibilities are going to match everything that we are talking about yeah so maggie mentioned that sometimes they'll visit uh, a website for an agency and they'll not know like who's who and what's the rank so we're just kind of giving the general this is what it could be. But at, like Jessica was saying, every agency runs is run by a different team, different people, and it could therefore be different. They might have different metrics for hitting different levels too. So we're not speaking on that. We're just speaking on what these terms are. Yeah, generally. Okay, so the first one is what Jessica is to us. They're the head of the agency. And sometimes some agencies will have multiple. It'll, you know, all the ones that have like multiple names, it'll be multiple people who yeah. are running the agency. But at Bookends, we've got Jessica. Um, and Jessica is in charge of overseeing us all and hurting us like sheep. <laughs> so awkward to have you talk about me. I am well, beyond I, uncomfortable right now. <laughs> well, that's your job. Jessica runs the agency. You oversee all of our, all of our, you know, daily processes. You also coach us. Not every head of agency does do that, but you coach us at the agency and mentor us. And I think that position is going to be different depending on the agency and what the head of agent head of the agency is interested in doing or offers their agents at the company. Yeah, and in my case, and I think in most cases, the head of the agency is a literary agent at heart. Right. You know, that's how they started and they built the, in my case, we built the agency, it grew, my responsibilities have shifted and altered, but I am still a literary agent at heart. So I still right. do that. Um, and then for us, as we go through the rest of the list, a lot of these other people have been added primarily because they are smarter than me in many ways, and they all have areas of expertise, and um, we all have various areas of responsibility to keep everything running smoothly because not one person can do it all. Yeah, so Jessica's steering the ship and the rest of us are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then they're the the literary agents on the team and, and some agencies don't have ranks at all, right? Some agencies just have all literary agents, but some agencies, particularly like Bookends does, we have different ranks of agents. So some terms that we've seen are senior literary agent, junior literary agent, regular literary agent, associate literary agent. And I've even seen uh, a literary agent apprentice. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all different ranks and variables of how that might be considered. Usually newer agents are either junior agent, apprentice, or literary. Associate. Agent. Associate, yeah, sorry, not yeah. apprentice. And literary agent. So usually you'll start there. And the more experience that folks get, or maybe there's a metric of how many sales they have to make within the agency, they'll move up in the ranks to whatever is Yeah, and, and I'll be honest, in a lot of cases, in my experience and sort of the way it operates at bookends, um, the titles in terms of what the agents do aren't a lot different. Everybody is a literary agent flat out. Right. Um, for us, the more this, those with the senior agent title um, typically help mentor and um, a little bit more. Um, so they have more experience, more knowledge, they help mentor either the associate agents or even the literary agents. Um, but other than that, their roles within the agency are typically the same. Right, we're taking on clients, we're selling their books, we're working as a team. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, so there's also the assistants, which Jessica always says are the backbone of the agency. So there are a few different titles that you might see. You might see literary assistant, administrative assistant, executive assistant, or just assistant. Um, and these folks are helping the agents do their job. They're helping us do everything that <laughs> sometimes we don't have the time for, or we need another hand for. They are, that's why Jessica calls them the backbone. They're helping us keep our heads afloat. Um, and some of them, particularly literary assistants, I think, are often building their own list as well or starting to gain knowledge and, and have an eye towards building their own list. Yeah, the way I see it, or the way it is at bookends typically, is that literary assistants are those who are looking to use the assistant experience to grow into different positions in publishing. Um, I like to see that the literary assistants are exploring where they might want to be. They don't, in my mind, they don't necessarily all want to be agents, or that's not where, what I expect of them. They may discover that they love sub rights or contracts or something else and find a different role within the agency. We also have administrative or executive assistants. Um, the way I see that is typically those people are here to be assistants. Their expertise is keeping me on track and they do that work. That doesn't mean that they are, they can't find different roles within the agency as time goes on, but um, they are not typically typically taking the job with growth in mind. That's yeah. right. And, and also every agency is going to have a different metric for when that assistant can start taking on clients or gets promoted or also what their job entails. Like every yeah. agency is going to have a different viewpoint on that. So keep yeah. that in mind too. Totally. Um, okay. So literary assistants are part of support staff and support staff can be large. And there's so many different positions that support staff can have in a literary agency. So we're gonna run through some that we've seen. Again, there might be others, but these are just probably the most common. Um, so we have bookkeepers. The bookkeepers are usually the ones that are making sure, that are paying, doing our payments, making sure everybody's getting paid on time and what they need to be paid. And they that could be for both the agents, but also all of our clients and handling payroll. Yep, yep, bookkeepers do a lot <laughs> I don't want that job ever <laughs> and then sort of this could be the same person it could be two different roles again depending on the way the agency defines it there's also those people who are in royalties and finance again could be the same person they help make sure that the royalty reports are received that they're accurate that they match the money that's coming in that the money's actually coming in all of those things um, are connected to, I guess what I would say is the finance department, which is the bookkeepers, the royalties, finance, those positions. Yeah, at least at Bookends, they work very closely together. The royalty finance person and the bookkeeper, they all work as a team. And mm -hmm. usually one hand knows what the other is doing. 100%, have to. Um, so there's also a contract person. Some agencies have this person on staff or as an agent on staff. Some agencies hire someone outside of the agency to work with them on contracts. But this person helps you review contracts, make sure that your boilerplate language is up to snuff. And for those that don't know, boilerplate is like your standard language that you might have with any particular publisher. Um, they might also just step in and negotiate those contracts for you. Um, every agency might use their contracts person differently or at a different level of involvement. Um, but this person is usually working with an agency to make sure their contract language is airtight. Yeah. And not every agent will use the contracts person at all. I mean, for years, we all negotiated our own, had really good, well-established boilerplates and things like that. Um, we have a contract person, but it, it is a requirement of mine that every agent has the ability to negotiate the contract and understand the contract and all of those terms on their own as well. But it's helpful, um, especially as an agency grows, to have that one person who knows the standard from publisher to agency across the board. Yeah, also I have heard of some agencies that don't have a specific contracts person, but review all of their contracts together or review and do their boilerplate together yeah. so that every agent has a reference that they can use. Um, so I don't think it's a bad thing if an agency doesn't have a contracts Great. person, but 
there, there are other ways to do it, but it's always a good question to ask. Like, how do you handle contracts? Mm -hmm. so, um, okay. So this position can be broken down in so many different ways, but there is sometimes, or most of the time, I don't know, a sub rights person or a subsidiary rights person. This is the, sometimes it's a literary agent, or sometimes it's someone whose job is fully devoted to subsidiary rights. This is the person who is helping you license film rights, audio rights, merchandising rights, anything else that their position entails. But this person is working with the agents and their clients to license their books in different mediums. I think this is one of those positions that is only seen at larger agencies. A lot of smaller agencies will use somebody who does this as their own business. So there are a lot of sub rights, foreign rights, specifically people who run an agency run, uh, that just sells foreign rights, and they will have contracts with a number of different agencies and work for them. Um, Bookends has um, people in house. We have two people, one who handles foreign rights and one who and handles other sub rights that includes film, audio, merchandising, and those other things that aren't translation rights basically right um and like you said they work closely with the agents and then our co-agent connections to make those sales happen right and a lack of a specific person to do this job i don't think is a bad thing every agency does it differently but it is always helpful for you to understand how that agency does it um so that you know yeah i mean keep in mind that at one point bookends didn't have any of these people yeah we had two literary agents that was it. So, um, but we did all of these things. We were able to option film. We were able to sell foreign rights. We were able to do all of these things. But as we grew, it was natural that the agency beyond just the agents had to grow as well. Yeah. Uh, some agencies have editors on staff, people who are working with the agents and their clients to edit the books prior to submission um, and make them the best that they can be. Right. And now a lot of agents will do that anyway on right. their own, but at some larger agencies, the agents may um, work with an editor on the, outside of doing the work just on their own. So again, that's dependent. Right. Um, okay. Interns. Interns are a big thing in agencies, right? Yeah. Um, I started as an intern, but interns are temporary employees who are looking to get experience and sometimes college credit um, to work inside an agency and get the lay of the land and understand the business a little bit. Um, interns are usually for a shorter amount of time. Most internships are 10 weeks. Um, some go more than that. Some go 12, 15. Um, again, every agency does this a little differently um, and what they have their intern involved in and what they have their intern do can vary by agency, but they, they might not always be listed on the website, but you might see them on social media. You may see them on the website um, or you may be hearing from them. If you're working with an agent, you might be hearing from the intern or have them CC'd on emails and things like that. Correct. And our hope is that interns are getting paid. And they should um, be. And or it's a very educational fellowship experience for which they can get credit. But yeah. that would be an and if possible. All right. I prefer you are paying your interns, folks. Agreed. It's just my opinion. That's okay. Why had, that's why I had to make the cringy face when we started. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the last role that might be at the agency, at least as far as we have thunk it all up, is the social media manager, the brand manager or director, or someone who's working in marketing. So I think this can take so many different shapes. At Bookends, I was social media manager for a long time, and I handled all of our social media, things like YouTube, Instagram, posting, replying to folks, answering emails, things like that. Um, some people have a brand director who is working on like, I don't know, all of that stuff and probably more, right? Like logos and websites and things of that nature. Well, when we did our website revamp a couple of years ago as social media manager, you led all of that. So, yeah. you know, met with the teams that we hired to actually do it. Um, I think you and I worked very closely with them on our vision for the website, what we needed. Yeah. I was years in the making, but um, <laughs> that's what a brand manager would do because at part of what you created and now Madison continues with is 
what is our brand when we go out into the world and what do we want that to look like? Yeah, and that's not usually... just so, it's typically social media these days, but you know, the website is a piece of right. that. And then, you know, even everything from our business cards to our letterhead to all of that. Right. Yeah, our logos and when it's time to do stuff like that. Yeah, all of that. Um, but I've also seen some agencies that have someone who works with marketing on the team. Um, mm -hmm. who might be in charge of things like social media, but also works in a role with clients mm, and that's true. You know, offer support with their marketing and publicity plans from their publishers or offer social media help, things like that. So mm -hmm. this role can take a few different forms. It just depends on the agency and what they are looking to offer to their clients. Um, yeah. I think this role always serves clients and always benefits clients, in my opinion, but um, there's different, I think there's just different levels of what might be offered. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so that covers what we think is, is the full agency gamut. Um, but if you have any questions about any of these roles, put them in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer them. Um, but yeah, I think that's everybody. I think we got them all, I hope. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form. Yep. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we hope to see you back here next week. Bye.